Hey everyone, it's Chris at saltwaterwitch.com. All my astro stuff is over there. So this is the first night, it's my first video of the first night out, that was last night, with the ZWO AM5 mount. That's a strain wave gear harmonic drive mount. And just to start off, I'm just stunned at how easy this mount is to set up, polar align, and run. The first thing I did was uh, slew, sl slewed the scope south to IC4665. I just picked a nice star cluster in Ophiuchus, near the meridian in the south. This is the first thing I wanted to do was try, it was guiding. So I cleared calibration in PHD2, ran a new calibration, and then guided for about an hour. And I ran with defaults uh, and one second exposures. So the total RMS error through the session was about 0.4 to 0.7 arc seconds, which is crazy good. And then I jumped into a bunch of 180 second subs of the Veil Nebula in Hydrogen Alpha and basically watching the guide graph hovering in the high, dot, uh, high 0.4s and low 0.5s. Really great, really incredible guiding. So this was, this was my first time setting up the AM5 for a night of imaging. And I think I was expecting something weird or some tech idiosyncrasy to appear because that's the way it always is. New devices are just going to behave in ways you might not anticipate. So this was, this was my first experience positioning the mount, scope, and tripod, which I easily carried out to the deck with everything connected, the whole thing. Everything was connected and ready to go. The tripod, the mount, the scope, everything. So polar alignment in Nina is simple and automated. I That ran as it always has run. Uh, and the AM5 azimuth and altitude adjustments are smooth and easy to dial in, which always appreciated on a mount. So I had, I had uh, the AM5 aligned and ready to capture data in maybe two or three minutes. It was, a, it was easy. But again, I'm a, I'm a bit stunned at how uncomplicated this was. I, I was expecting something to go wrong, but the AM5 was just doing everything right with, you know, accurate slewing, guiding, tracking. I was sitting on the couch in the living room taking 180 second subs of, you know, on the back deck. So there, I mean, a couple surprises. I didn't expect the AM5 to be so compact and transportable. And I say this knowing my primary purpose for buying the mount was portability. It's crazy how easy this is to move around. And I think it comes down to the counterweights. They are such an, a fundamental part of the system that it felt like I had missed something in setup. But after this one night under the stars with the AM5, now I'm thinking, unless you have a massive scope, counterweights should be a thing of the past. We have the technology. Why do we need them? So a couple other things. I, I did try out the new mount with Ecos Indy, and I ran into an error connecting the AM5. Uh, it was an error setting the UTC offset. I didn't dig into it, but it looks like a similar error, an older error, but already fixed in the LX200 instruction set, where Ecos is using a float, and the mount is maybe expecting an integer for the offset. I I didn't dig into it. I don't, you know, it'll, I'm assuming it'll get resolved uh, soon. Seems pretty minor to me, easily fixable. I'll get back to Ecos as soon as I have time. On the other hand, Nina and ASCOM worked flawlessly with the ZWO AM5, at least with all, you know, my standard workflow. That's, that's polar alignment, slewing, plate solving, guiding, focus, capture, all the usual stuff. I'm running uh, version 2 HF1 beta 15 on a, fan, a fanless Windows 10 machine. So finally, uh, here's another thing. The skies weren't perfect. Seeing was maybe a little above average, so it was pretty good. Certainly worth being going out and imaging. Uh, and, but the mount performed with those, with those total RMS error numbers, you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 arc seconds. Just amazing. So that's it for now. Clear skies, everyone.